of it. Map of the area, you can see there's a nice band of trees there between the tree uh, due east. Urbana, heard in Champaign Urbana at 106.5 FM. Our evening. Uh, due east of the proposed uh, emulsicote plant. And I just wish to sort of second what uh, Mr. Charlo just said. If the lights were kept low enough, and as many of the trees re retained, if you look at the map of the area, you can see there's a nice band of trees there between Harold and and we live opposite one another across from Lincoln Avenue, the very <coughs> east of the plant. And if the trees were to remain and the lights kept low, it would mean a lot to us living there because uh, when lights go on, like when they did the transfer station, in the wintertime those lights are really annoying. In the summer it's fine because there's lots of trees and you barely see them. So that certainly helps the situation a great deal. So we would just respectfully request that could be accomplished. Mr. Smythe. Could you quickly describe for me the kinds of lights that are being used by the transfer station? Are they the kind that stick out the bottom or rounded, you know, so that they have a lot of side air, uh, light pollution? Or are they the flat kind that are supposed to go just straight down? Oh, golly. I never actually looked at there. You'd have, I'd have to drive over to it to see, there, you know, how the road curves around yeah. there. I mean, they're not so bad. The, oh. they, when the city or the county changed that road there, they also put in two or three other big lights there that are just, I think they're just big round things that just sort of glare all around. Uh-huh. Okay. And they're... You can see them a long way away. Okay, thank you. And since we're only an eighth of a mile or so from the proposed plant, that's the closest they'd be, they would be annoying. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Okay, we have an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of an annexation agreement, attractive land contiguous to the northwest corner of the city limits adjacent to the Canadian Re National Railway in its plan case 2005-A-05A, Amulsicote Incorporated. Actually, I can present a staff report for all these cases simultaneously since they're interconnected. Do you want us to do all of them in one motion or separate motions? You should take separate motions, but I think the um, presentation and discussion would probably benefit from omnibus consideration. There are, rather than going through the many different detailed memos that um, Paul Lindahl prepared before he got worn out and went on vacation, <laughs> I'll just sort of generally um, go over this um, string of actions, and I know there was some discussion at the previous committee meeting as well as discussion at plan commission previously, and if you were to look at your location map, perhaps in the first memorandum, that would help in describing this set of actions. Um, the first case is for an annexation agreement, which includes a rezoning and a special use permit contained within it. And that annexation agreement is for the property described on the location map as Tract A, uh, which is not currently in the city, um, but has been acquired by Omulsicote and is proposed to be a portion of a tract for relocation of part of their operations, which currently are on West University Avenue in Urbana. The uh, first case addresses annexation agreement issues, including um, conformance with our comprehensive plan, which does show um, future industrial use in this area, uh, response to the LaSalle criteria that we look at for all rezoning cases, and in addition, as was mentioned, special use permit conditions, since a portion of the facility would be on the southernmost portion of Track A, adjacent to Lot 204, shown on the location map. 
The second case involves the actual annexation of Track A. So, of course, you'd want to have your agreement in place, and then the actual annexation would be considered for to come in place inside the city effective tomorrow, and that is for that 13.843 acre tract of land shown as Track A. That's the item that went to committee before all the other items. The third case is for a final plat, and this is for what's shown on the location map as Lot 204. This area was preliminarily platted previously as part of the North Lincoln Avenue Industrial Park and is currently owned by University Construction, or MACC. The reason it is being platted as Lot 204 at this time is to allow for purchase by a MULSA coat of Lot 204. This question came up previously, well, why doesn't this also include Track A as one lot? And it will. It will have to come back as a replat, but before a MULSA coat can purchase the property legally from University Construction, it needs to complete its platting process as Lot 204. So you will see a subsequent case. You'll also see the portion of the railroad frontage south of Track A. You will see come into part of that replat to facilitate a form of land trade to University Construction, which owns lands to the east of that railroad frontage. So this is a case where this excess railroad frontage was purchased by one party and will benefit both that party as well as adjacent industry. So the memorandum for that case recognizes that there were previously waivers allowed in that preliminary plat. There are no additional waivers requested, and the final plat is consistent with that preliminary plat. Therefore, this is an action that did not need to go to the Plan Commission. The fourth item is to allow a special use permit for the same operations to be conducted on Lot 204, which is currently within the city. So it was not part of the annexation agreement, special use permit. And again, it needs to review the same criteria for special use permits, and it has a number of conditions applied or requested to be applied to it. To review what's being permitted by a special use permit, you can look at one of the exhibits which shows a site plan, and we've worked to make sure we have the latest and best version of the site plan, a couple different versions in the Planning Commission packet. And the current site plan reflects a lot of the mitigation strategies that Amosa Coat will be using as required by the best practices in the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. So there, for example, will be a berm around the entire project site. I'm looking at this exhibit, which shows a site plan covering both the southern portion of Tract A and Lot 204. And you'll see basically what's proposed is a very small office, very small parking lot, and four major tanks for their operations, and then a drive area. We've also had review, ongoing review by our fire department, and the fire chief is requesting improved access to the tanks to the north, and that will be necessary to meet our fire code. In the special use permit ordinance, there are a number of conditions that were recommended by staff and by the Planning Commission, and these are to protect impacts of the operation, ensure consistency with other rules and regulations, including those by the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, ensure that the operations are limited to those described on the application, ensure general adherence to the site plan, and other conditions contained in the ordinance. This series of steps, with the exception of the annexation itself and the final plat, were reviewed at Planning Commission at a recent meeting, and they recommended by a vote of 6 to 1 for approval. We have representing here tonight from Amulsa Coates, Scott Yates, and Jim Green, as well as a representative from University Construction, John Peisker, who can help answer any questions of a technical nature. Are there any questions? 
Mr. Smyth. No, go ahead. I'm trying to figure out one. My questions. Okay, I have a couple of questions. I'll start and then you might come back to me. Is there a historical precedent for requiring in a special use permit that a petitioner clean up a site after they're finished with it so that basically we won't have a situation where we have a site that is turned into a brownfield that may be vacated in the future if the company chooses to leave or the company 50 years down the line may not exist anymore and we would have a situation where we'd have a polluted site that then the city would potentially take up and mitigate the environmental consequences and turn it over to someone else and the taxpayers would end up paying for that. Has there been discussion about that kind of thing? Is there a precedent for us considering that with a special use permit so that we're not basically stuck holding the environmental rescue bag? I think those situations refer to sites that were developed previous to current environmental regulations. Currently there's basically cradle to grave responsibility by industries to take responsibility for these wastes and this is why these permits are so rigorously followed by the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. I don't think that this is a future brownfield. The Superfund sites and the brownfields are relics of past poor practices that preceded our current environmental rules. Where we do see takedown provisions or bonds posted are when there are unusual land uses proposed that may or may not succeed in the future and could leave a detriment to the community that could cause costs to remove. For example, when Champaign County reviewed a wind turbine proposal, they were concerned about removal and required a bond for the removal. I think in this case we fully expect compliance with environmental rules and would not be looking that this would be a future polluted site. And I'm sure the industry representatives may have other responses. So this was not something that we felt would be necessary. That's all for now. Mr. Smyth. This may be a question for the representatives here. I guess I'm very sympathetic with the, well, first I very much appreciate that this project is taking place and I very much encourage its relocation to along the railroad tracks. I think it's a very good fit and am very supportive of it. I'm also very concerned about light pollution in general in the communities. And as a spouse of an amateur astronomer, I hear about it all the time. So I'm very sympathetic with the neighbors who have addressed the lighting concern. So I'm wondering if you would be willing to accept some kind of additional language in the special use permit that addresses the lighting issue. Something along these lines is what I have in mind. The owner agrees to the use of directional lighting design so that the site lighting does not extend beyond the property described herein and that additional screening such as large trees and other plantings be used to minimize light pollution beyond the property. Is that an acceptable condition or not? Yes. Yes? There may be some wording that needs to be adjusted here. I don't know if it fits in exactly. I'll let Libby take a look and you can share it with me. Jim Green, one of the lawyers for Molsico. This is Scott Yates. And I was sitting there wondering how would you ever word something like that and you did it. So apparently Mr. Yates doesn't seem to think that's a problem. But I would point out that you see gas stations that have big lights and they're trying to attract customers and obviously this is not that type of operation. We would spotlight like certain areas. We're not going to project the light out. We're going to light up the truck loading area and the rail unloading area and the light would be projected down for the workers. Like Jim says, we're not advertising. It's just safety. Would you like to see the language here just real quickly? Sure. Read the original off. 
I will. Mayor? Yes. Could we uh, pass this motion with the intent to uh, pass with these uh, words between Charlie and mm -hmm. right now? Yes, yeah, also the And I have one more question. Okay. Hey, look, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, I attended the uh, planning meeting in which some of this information was first presented. And um, there's two things. And one thing we came up just recently um, by. Um, um, was it Miss Atkins who uh, asked the question of um, whether trees that are on the property now that um, are between the uh, residence to the east and the lot 204, and I guess perhaps it's Tract A, would be retained? So I guess what I'm wondering, I haven't I haven't driven out to see this uh, the, where these trees are located specifically, but as I recall, at this time there are trees that grow along the the railroad um, uh, right of way uh, in track day and the long extension that goes north and northeast. I understand that there's a, a fair grove of um, 20 or 30 year old trees along that in that property. And at the during the planning session, that was brought up. And the question was, you're only using the southern part of track day and that the rest I believe um, a Mosa code indicated would be basically retained unused or unaffected at this time. So point eight, my first question is, um, can you explain to me um, whether tra the northern part of Tract A north of Lot 204 will be developed or clear cut or in any way uh, changed from the current uh, how it looks today? No, we're not going to do anything with it. In other words, it's going to stay basically in stasis or uh, untouched at this point. Do you have plans in the future to do other developments there? No. Okay. Um, and the second question was, as I recall, um, you seem to be uh, um, open to uh, planting a row of trees on the east side of lot 204 um, next to or in front of the berm as a kind of a, a visual screen or shield, and this, this came up actually at this point in the conversation about um, vegetative um, shielding of light. Uh, those, uh, there's no suggestion on the site diagram that I can see here of any kind of um, landscaping along mm -hmm. the eastern edge of the property, but would you be uh, open to considering some uh, treescaping on that side? We, we plan on doing that anyway. You it's did. Not, it's not part of the site plan as yet, but we plan on putting trees up along that uh, that eastern part of the property. Because I think that would help mitigate some of the light spillover and also shield some of the operations and the equipment from the residences who I realize don't live immediately next to the plant. And there is one more lot that has an industrial designation to its immediate east. But I thought it would be a very considerate um, step. Do you think that we would see uh, some kind of uh, descriptive 
information in when the, the plot comes back and the uh, replotting of the lot 204 might uh, appear before council? Um, yeah, I can, I can have that put in there. That'd be appreciated. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Mr. Bauer sucks. Yeah, I just had uh, Mr. Yates a few questions about the health issues from everything I understand from the Planning Commission hearings and all this is a safe operation and the emissions are um, maybe a nuisance problem and not a health problem so I just wanted on the record for the people of Urbana for them to hear a little bit about that um, so am I correct that it there have been these odor issues that have been resolved in the last number of years and that that is entirely a nuisance problem and not a health issue I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word nuisance but uh, mm -hmm. There were some concerns by neighbors south of the current plant mm -hmm. at least 10 years ago, and uh, those uh, problems were addressed, and Mulsa Coat went above and beyond anything that was required by the Illinois P EPA. And, of course, you know Michael Pollack is the chairman of your plant commission, and he happened to be the alderman from the ward uh, contiguous to the Mulsa Coat plant. He was satisfied at that time as a council member with uh, the remediation plan they put into effect at that time and they're a good neighbor I mean they had to spend thousands of dollars they really weren't required to spend and my understanding is that neighbors who I mean are just right next to the current plant are not complaining you know, today mm -hmm. and the plant that will be built north of town will be substantially similar so even if somebody lives a quarter of a mile away I mean, we're not anticipating any kind of an odor problem and there's no other kind of problem, but I guess when you use the word nuisance, uh, I, I don't think that's, in all due respect, an appropriate word because I don't think they're a nuisance in any way whatsoever. Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, it's well put. It's, there's been many studies done on, on the asphalt fumes, and, and uh, to date, uh, there's been nothing that's a health issue. It's, it's just a, an odor. Mm -hmm. Ms. Stevenson, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Um, are you still yeah, I had a follow-up question. Yeah, thank you. Very good. And um, you know, I also think some some neighbors are concerned. But you're right. The the past location was within 200 feet of a neighborhood, and I really am pleased by this move because it's you know it's a better industrial location and isn't right next to a neighborhood. You you did point out that at the new location you'll be using the same vapor recovery system. I think that's what it was called as at the past location for for a similar or substantially similar amount of odor control. I uh, just wanted to make sure that was correct as well. Yeah, we'll be using the, the, the technology changes for odor control on a, a annual basis. <coughs> We're going to take advantage of whatever is available at this time. I don't know that it's going to be exactly what's at the, the existing site because there's, there's other um, um, ways of treating the odor that are a little bit better that we're going to look at. <coughs> And are you amenable to, th thank you very much, I'm, I was really glad to hear that. I know you won't be as close to as many people, but the fact that you would do the same amount of odor control and that you're putting effort into that is really important. I'm wondering if you're amenable to us, including that as a condition um, for the special use, that, that a substantially similar level of odor control, um, such as a vapor recovery system, would be used here as at the current operation at 705 East University. Uh, I wouldn't have any problems with that. We don't know exactly what it's going to be. I couldn't put it down, mm -hmm. you know, specifically what system we're going to choose. But, okay. You know, I, I wouldn't have any issues with you know indicating that we're going to put in uh, an odor control for the site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Miss. Okay. Any other questions? Did you want to change the wording, Mr. Smith? Uh, well, no. I was going to. Uh, I think the first there are five pieces to this. The first four are the ordinance approving and authorized execution of the annexation agreement, the rezoning, uh, annexing, and then the final plot division. I'm reading the wrong one. Oops. I'm, I'm reading the wrong do, one. I'm the sorry. revised uh, one. Okay. The revised one. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. We, okay. Uh, items number two, three, and four are the annexation agreement annexing the territory and the final division plat I would I would move those three as an omnibus mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll separately we can introduce the additional site conditions to to, to the fourth the special permits so I'd like to vote the special permits separately and I would second that the okay there is a, a motion by Mr. Smythe and seconded by Miss Barnes to include um, 
an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of an annexation agreement, um, an ordinance annexing certain territory to the city of Urbana, and an ordinance approving a final subdivision plat, and these are all for plan. No, the first two are for plan case 2005-A-05A and 05B. And the third one is plan case 1952-S-05. So do we need a roll call on this? Would the clerk please, or is there any other discussion? Ms. Stevenson. What's plan case 1954-N-05? It's, it's included in the annexation agreement. There's no need for a separate map amendment. It's in the revised um, oh, I agenda okay. that's I'm been sorry. eliminated. So we have three items that we're voting on now in one omnibus motion. All those in favor? No, sorry. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mayor Bressen? Yes. Okay, next, oh, an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow an asphalt blending storage and distribution plant located at 1001 West Saline Court in the IN Industrial Zoning District in its plan case number 1952-SU-05, Amulsico Incorporated. Okay, so moved. Second. <coughs> Are there, is there yeah. any further discussion? Yeah. I'd, I'd move to amend the special permit by adding item number or condition number eight uh, on page three uh, to read as follows. Uh, the owner agrees to the use of directional lighting design so that site lighting does not extend beyond the property described herein, particularly with respect to residential directions, and that additional screening such as large trees and other plantings be used to minimize light pollution beyond the property. So moved. Second. I'd second. Okay, this um, an amendment made by Mr. Smythe and seconded by Ms. Barnes. Um, Ms. Chinua. Thanks. I have a question for staff regarding the language. Um, Dr. Tyler, do you feel that that language makes it clear that tree plantings will be required and that they will be required along the, the along the berm and uh, I, blocking residential areas. I'm just concerned because I feel like I understand the spirit of the motion. I, I support the spirit of the motion. I just want to make sure that uh, since we haven't had our attorney look over, and I know you're not an attorney, but um, since we haven't had our attorney look over this language, I'm concerned that it doesn't actually require tree planting. I mean, that they could plant, not that you would, but planting one tree might satisfy the, the requirements of this particular language. Well, it talks about minimizing light towards residential directions, which is to the east, but it doesn't specifically say plant trees along the east border of Lot 204. They've said that they will do that, and we remember that, and we'll require that, but to find it further, you probably you'd need to make that explicit. Just quickly, because I, I did not visit the site, and that's always the danger of not visiting a site before voting on it. Um, there's a lot of maps. They're very helpful. But if if we were to require locations of tree plantings, what's your recommendation to make sure that we, that we um, take care of uh, those residential areas? Would it be just the east side of Lot 204, or would it also be to... Um, require the preservation of the existing trees, for example, at the top of Tract A, if that's even in the, um, I guess this is the final plat, and the final plat just has to do with Lot 204, is that correct? And that we'll have a different plat in the future for Tract A? The, okay. um, yes, but that's a subdivision plat, not a site plan. Mm -hmm. One thing you could do is, kind of a favorite condition, is to require a landscape plan for screening and tree preservation subject to review by the zoning administrator in consultation with the city arborist and I think that's what we would we know in the site 
special use permit conditions are technically applying to lot 204 where the majority of the operations are, but there's also the lower portion of track day. But I think working together, we'll make sure these conditions cover the full operation. So if you wanted that level of tree preservation and tree planting, um, we would uh, review administratively a landscape plan and make sure that it, it does what the intent of the council was, which was to provide that screening and tree preservation. That's Here's a question to um, the representative of Mulsa Code, if you would be amenable to su to uh, submitting a landscape plan to the city arbor arborist and city staff. Yes. Okay. So I'd, I, w I wonder if this is the best way to do it is to, to um, because I think the language on the table is good, and this perhaps is an additional, um, additional option, which is to add to it, add a condition that the, um, that the Amosa Code submit a landscape plan to the zoning administrator for review of the, um, uh, by the city arborist and zoning administrator. So perhaps the best way to do it is to vote on the current amendment on the table, and then I can make that amendment as a second condition. Okay. Um, does this require a roll call, or is this... Okay, so this is just a voice vote. Is there any discussion on this amendment by Mr. Smythe? Okay, um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> okay, the motion carries. Now you want to have another amendment? Ms. Yes, uh, I make the motion that the owner agrees to add the condition number nine, that the owner agrees to submit a landscape plan to the zoning administrator for review by the administrator and the city arborist. Is there a second? I would second that motion. Mr. Roberts seconds the motion. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Roberts. Um, <coughs> this plot, when it's combined with track A, is going to be uh, replotted. Is that correct, Libby? And it would come back to us, and would we be able to then see... Um, Verify that this has occurred at that time. Is that the right appropriate time to look at that? As an informational item, but the plat really only deals, according to our subdivision ordinance, with the layout of the land, not the use. So it's attaching one parcel to another parcel and making sure the roads are still working and our subdivision ordinance is, is still working. We could, as part of that case, give you an update on the site plan, but really the zoning permission which you're doing now is the right time to apply to conditions that. for the development. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we're voting on this uh, amendment to add condition number nine for a landscaping plan. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. And now we will vote on the Next ordinance. Question. Yes. If I, I'd like to make a motion to add one more condition, and that was the condition about the odor control. Uh, my motion would be to add condition 10, that the activity allowed by the special use permit on the site employ a similar level of odor control as at 705 East University. That's my motion. motion. And I would second that. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Bowersox and seconded by Mr. Lewis. Is there any discussion? Yes, real quickly. Mr. Uh, I would I would uh, submit a set friendly uh, amendment, similar or better than. That's, okay. Yes, that's similar or better fine. odor control. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor um, of this amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. The motion carries. Okay, now we're going to vote on this ordinance, which has been amended three times. <laughs> All those in favor of the ordinance uh, for plan case number 1952 SU 05, please signify by saying aye. 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 Roll call. Oh, oh roll this call. is a roll call? Yes. The amendments don't have a roll call, but the ordinance does? Yes. All right, we'll have a roll call. Mr. Barnes. Clerk, please call the roll. Okay. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Motion carries. 
Okay, the next item, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you for your cooperation. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item.